Hi guys, how's it going? Um, my name is Magno Guillen. I'm taking currently the class called uh, Malware Reverse Engineering with Professor Kalim. And this is basically just going to be an instructional video regarding some of uh, the Android uh, devices uh, running Jelly Bean. I would like to basically base this video upon uh, permissions for the market store or for any actual applications that are able to be installed using uh, Android. As we know, uh, the Android, uh, the Google Marketplace is actually the main one that most Android users use um, to actually be able to download the applications that they desire. Then now, when you go to download an application, I'm pretty sure none of you actually pay much attention to that little page that actually comes in before you install it. It actually gives you a list of permissions. Now, what are permissions? Permissions are basically just letting you know what that app has access to. Not meaning that that app is actually going to do something with what it has access to, but that it, if it so desires, it's going to be able to actually go inside each content that it defines as a permission. Now, why is that a bad thing and a good thing? A good thing is, let's say, just um, ask for admin's permission to access your internet, your storage, your messages, contacts, stuff like that. Let's say uh, the famous app called WhatsApp is uh, basically a messenger app. And it gets a contact from your actual contact, so it will need a permission to see your contacts. Now, let's say an app for like um, showing you the stats and scores for your favorite football players or for anything, you would actually need internet uh, permissions to do so. But as we know, also apps can be obtained using third party applications. One of the most famous ones is called the Black Market App Store, and with this, you could actually download um, pretty much any application that it wants. It would also show you permissions as well, so that is always going to be shown. Now, what is the bad thing about permissions? Let's say um, you have an application telling you uh, that it's a currency guide. Basically, it converts currency for you. But let's say that the application actually asks for permissions for reading your contacts, your messages, and there's actually permissions that allow the application to send SMS if it desires. There was uh, an incident not long ago that it actually... Uh, there was an application that would send messages to your contacts because why? Because it asked for that permission and you, uh, like most people, would just click OK and then just let the program run. So what I'm basically going to show you is um, a list of some of these permissions that are uh, the most common ones that may or may not be needed by that application. And what is going to be your job? Your job is going to be to actually review those permissions and in your own thinking determine whether that application needs that permission or it does not need the permission. I'm going to show you ways to view the actual permissions that are with that actual APK package, which is the application, using uh, applications that are already out in the Google Marketplace and uh, applications for your desktop computer. So you're able to see that uh, permission, okay, and be able to say if it has too many permissions or it has the right amount of permission that it so requires. And the first thing I'm going to show you is using the actual phone device to look at the permissions that are available for each application. So this is the phone that um, I'm going to be using to show you guys about the applications and everything. It's basically the Samsung Note 2 and it, it was the one provided with the class. Now one of the best applications that I have found so far for the terms of uh, permissions and stuff like that would be this one right here. Let me just with the page and it's called uh, Clufo. Now Clufo is basically a permission a manager for all the applications that you have installed. So let's see what it looks like once you actually launch it up. Now the first thing you're gonna see is its privacy score. Um, Privacy score basically depending on all the applications that you have, whether it's good or not for them to actually what they actually access once they launch or everything over here. You see as well it tells you the number of applications you have installed. Right now I have 41. And it would actually tell you the risks of the applications, ranking them from low to moderate and the highest being high risk of course. Now what does it rank it as? It's based on the actual permissions for each application. So it doesn't really um, look at the application that you have and then compare a permission, but just the actual permissions, which permissions it thinks it's actually uh, would not respect your privacy and stuff like that. So let's click on one of the apps. All right, so over here I have a bunch of applications that are uh, moderate risk. 
So now let's see something like um, like Appleware. Appleware will be at their application app store. So now it actually shows you the permissions that it has in a very um, simple kind of way. So there's actually a permission for uh, connecting to the internet, connecting to Twitter, to Facebook. Um, and now the ones that I actually list as modules will be the ones that are saying um, to look up that it leaks your device ID and it checks your location. Now, once you click on an actual description, it will tell you more about the actual, what that permission means. So this one's basically an app that uploads your unique device ID to uh, an actual URL server. So now that's very dangerous because once they have that, what can they do? They can track your location and behavior across more than one app. And it also checks your location as you can see. So that would be a very bad thing. So now let's try something uh, that we know is actually highly infected. I have an app over here called uh, Flash. As you know, um, Google market took out Flash anymore. So people will have to go to third party apps to download it. So I have this one right here that downloaded for a third party app store. And let me just install it real quick. So it shows you the permissions. This is what it shows. Every time you go to download, let's see all of them. And what it actually showed you. It has access to your location, to storage, meaning that it's able to modify and delete your contents of your USB storage. Now, why would an application that is just for Flash need that? Uh, phone calls. It could read your phone status and identity. And it hides this little uh, information about your device. Develop them tools, network communication and all these other applications. So I'm not gonna go ahead and install it, we'll just a demonstration to show you guys how the applications, every time you install it, they're actually there for you to see. So now I have another one called NQ Mobile Security. That's basically gonna be like an antivirus slash uh, permission viewer. So this is what it looks like when you launch it up. And what I'm interested in is this little piece of uh, software called Privacy Advisor. Now, what I like about it is that um, it actually lets you view the report of the of the old applications in a simple way. So it's gonna tell you which applications have access to your contacts, messages, call logs, location, and recording. So now let's go try with recording. So these applications have access uh, to the recording for your device. And now for contacts, as you can see, um, of course, uh, some applications actually do have access, like Pinterest, I guess, for your followers, but other applications sh that shouldn't have access, like, for example, here's an instance over here, the Bible, why should an application need access to your context? And stuff like that. So that's actually a new thing. Let's see messages. And right, we have over here other applications that have access to your messages. So those are basically the two main ones that I would recommend for the actual installation for your Android device to view applications that are already installed, their permissions. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the ones for the computers. Hi guys, how's it going? Um, so I just basically want to be able to show you the ways to actually view the permissions um, using the web. The easiest thing that you can do is using this website called uh, androidpermissions.org. So basically what the website does is, uh, let me show you. Um, it's going to look like this. So it's basically a group of people that allow you to actually upload your actual APK for the software and for you to be able to group, to look at the permissions. So over here we see the three main options that they have. So upload your app for analysis, which is basically pretty, pretty self-explanatory. You're going to upload the APK that you have already on file and it's going to tell you if that actual APK has too many permissions on, or if it's just fine, it has enough permissions that it needs or if it has, um, and the actual permissions that it has. And over here, these two are the same. We're just gonna look at the permission map. That's gonna be a detailed information for every permission and what it means. So this is basically what the permissions look like. So you have, um, they categorize it for um, different ones. So for instance, they have a permissions here for sending. Bluetooth will be sending via Bluetooth, call phone, be, uh, phone calls or other stuff. We're also receiving messages, so that will basically mean spam, stuff like that. The internet ones are pretty self-explanatory. And um, here are other ones. 
basically that I'll write you to write, delete, or an update. So this has to do with the history and the bookmarks, calendar, contacts, as well as other inf your messages, of course. You don't want applications to be doing that if they're not supposed to. So now they could actually affect your settings such as uh, internet, um, web browsing, sending information to other people, what websites you go to. And once you actually have, you upload the application, this is what it looks like. So I upload an application that's usually for uh, tracking care of um, your, your uh, income and your wallets and stuff like that. Um, this is the required permission that it's asking you for. Um, vibrate for notifications, contacts. I still don't see why it would need contacts. Extern it will act it wants to write in your external storage. That seems a little fishy too. To be able to read your contacts and stuff like that. And here's the one that they think is overprivileged. Says to access a Wi-Fi say. What does that mean? It means that it may or may not actually change or um, turn on your Wi-Fi. So what application do you actually want it to do that? So that's one of the main ones that you could use. Now, this other one is called APK Spy. Now, APK Spy is actually kind of like a GUI for the APK tool um, command lines that you can see. I'll show you that one as well. So basically, APK Spy will be, um, you drag your APK into it and it will tell you basically what permissions it has. So now, so I was telling you, this is going to be the same one as the Adobe one. So you can no longer download through uh, the Google Play Store, so you have to download somewhere else. Let's put it in here. Let's see what permissions it actually has. So, so what permissions do you guys actually think that the Adobe should have? It should just have internet. First of all, it should not have all of these permissions at all. It should not be able to write to your external storage. It should not be able to receive uh, stuff about your one of your device boots or not. Of course, it should not be able to install shortcuts into your actual um, device. So once that you actually install this information, that was. Um, actually happened to me when I was just sitting out, it would install a bunch of uh, spyware and adware to your device and it would just bombard it with all of that. That's what you can see, uh, it's a very bad actually. And now the last way that I want to show you is the most useful way of um, using the APK tool. This is command based line, so if um, you actually into the stuff, it's going to be very useful. I already have the APK tool installed in my computer. So you basically get this is going to be a command. Let me go to where I have my files. So basically you're going to run apk2 and that command is going to be decode and you're going to write down the name of the actual application. Let's call um, that's the name com.adobe flash installer dot uh, one.apk and now I'm just going to give it a, a folder name permission uh, let's name it uh, this um, video test and it's going to be doing all of this it's going to be going through the application it's basically going to decode the application it's going to make it easier for you to see so now that actually creates this folder over here and that pre and the actual permissions can be found in the android manifest so here <laughs> these are going to be actually the same ones that you will find using the apk tool let me just verify that for you So as you see, you have internet, network state, find location, which is actually your GPS locations, and all the other ones. Uh, so that's other ways that you can see your permissions. Now, there is a way for you not to actually uh, delete those permissions that you don't want that application to have, which you could, would actually, um, the easiest way, I'm not going to go too much detail into all the stuff into it. But let's say I just wanted to have internet. So I will come over here into my actual folder where everything is, delete those applications, save the contents. I'm gonna go back to my command line to where it was, um, and I'm gonna build that actual application now. That's gonna be APK tool build and, and the name of the folder where everything was, it's gonna create the APK. Now, since you know this is basically for developers only. Why? Because after this, you will have to actually sign that application and uh, and be able to uh, 
installed on your phone. Now I can show you over here. And this is that new app AP, uh, installer package that I built. So if I put it into this APK spy over here, it should only have the permission for internet. And this one, which I forgot to delete. So now that's pretty much it guys. So what I wanted to show you about permissions, just remember to always be careful when you're installing software into your phone. You don't want to have viruses in your phone or spyware or a ridiculous amount of adware that's just annoying. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and this is just for informational basis about permissions. Just always remember to at least have a certain uh, type of software that you, you guys use to actually do the permissions. Thank you.